Hey Alpha fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today I want to go over Kadena, but before jumping into that chart, I did want to spend just a little bit of time on Bitcoin because as you know, I've been trying to get these warnings out there. Uh, these are just uh, kind of due diligence, kind of responsibility, kind of uh, messages that we need to keep in mind so that we don't become overly exuberant in the market. Uh, this is a potential recession year. It's not a uh, year where you know countries around the world are printing money. In fact, they're contracting, right? They're economically contracting, fiscally contracting, which means that they're trying to remove money from the money supply in order to fight inflation, right? The less money that's out there, the less inflation, right? So, uh, of course, this is a totally different scenario than we had back in 2020, right? So, with that in mind, let's just very briefly, very, very briefly take a look at the Bitcoin chart to see what I'm talking about. Well, let's go ahead and put on that master algorithm that I've developed for Bitcoin, right? Which shows the way that Bitcoin moves. And although we're in an uptrend, Currently, ever since, uh, you know, the middle of January or the end of January, rather, we've been in an uptrend. Uh, this algorithm has held constant all through the, the entire cycle since the peak, all the way since uh, actually October, right? So October, I identified it and then, uh, you know, I confirmed it in November and December. And it's just been very playable. Uh, all the way since, uh, you know, December, January, February, and even into March, right? So we should take this algorithm very seriously. I understand, you know, I'm not some master technician or whatever. Obviously, I'm just a continuous learner using out-of-the-box thinking and my own way of analysis. But that doesn't make it invalid, okay? that This means that we should take, you know, new ideas with a grain of salt, but we also shouldn't dismiss them because what you can see is that we are entering this zone, right? I can kind of contract this box because we now know exactly where we are, where we have this high and then we have a dip, right? We have a dip and then we have a second high. And after that, every single time it's been followed by a 20% drop, 20% drop, 20% drop, 20% drop. Are we going to have a 20% drop if we get rejected here? And it's always followed when the high that we put in is a lower high from the previous high in this particular as uh, this particular um, aspect of the algorithm. Okay, so we make a high, which is going to be your ultimate sell point. If you follow my algorithm, you accumulate in these areas. And then you sell everything right here. And if you didn't sell right there, you have a second chance to sell right here. And guess what? Bitcoin's presenting us with another opportunity to sell, following the algorithm perfectly. Okay? And the fact that it's putting in a lower high bothers me. It bothers me because I thought since this was an uptrend, you know, maybe we were going to put in a higher high. And this algorithm was going to get flipped on its head. Let me go ahead and put linear on. I put a little note to remind me what, what the chart is, uh, either logarithmic or linear. And uh, so you can see this channel. You know, we broke to the top of it and we broke out. But the, the question is, are we just putting in the same pattern just in a higher channel? And then is this going to just continue down into those, you know, low 30s or perhaps even mid 20s um, such that we get, you know, a massive correction on the macro cycle on Bitcoin? Well, I don't know, but it's just a warning. OK, it's just a warning. There is the potential that we could get squeezed to the upside if, in fact, this algorithm has been flipped by being in an uptrend. And maybe we get squeezed up into those mid 50s. OK, that's what I'm looking for. But I'm just putting us all on high alert because this algorithm has not failed. This algorithm that I developed just using my own imagination, not any type of, uh, 
you know, particular pattern that is standardized in the industry, right? This thing is just very specific, a very specific thumbprint for Bitcoin in this era, in this epoch of Bitcoin's life. This algorithm has been working with a 100% hit rate. So Alpha Fam, just be aware, just be a little bit extra cautious of your positions, have your stop losses a little bit tighter. And let me go ahead and show you the range that I'm looking at. And this is all for your protection, okay? Because I don't want to say you should get into a coin unless I'm also telling you the risk, okay? Like some people are just moon boys. They'll tell you you're going to go to outer space. And, uh, you know, in fact, they're going to send you there without an oxygen pack, okay? They're going to leave you to die. I'm giving you this in advance just so that you can you know have it on hand just in case it goes the wrong way you were prepared psychologically prepared you had your plan in place you knew what could happen okay that's uh, me trying to take care of you otherwise i'm going to continue on with the video um you know that uh, could show some uh, higher targets on some coins because we also need to uh, plan for the upside as well right but uh, if you take a look at how these things tend to play out, right, you can see the majority of the price action was a lower high, even though they kind of wick you up a little bit. And then you get these huge dumps, right, these 20% or more dumps, which, uh, of course, if you consider from here, you know, it's approximately 20%. You know, consider from here, approximately 25%. From here, approximately 25%, right? This one, you know, is 18% almost. And then from here, right, what could we be talking about? Maybe a 20% dump to 38K, right? Maybe a 25% dump, right, to 36K. I don't know. If this pattern continues to play out, you just should have some expectation that that's possible. And what would validate that? Because we work on validations and invalidations. We don't work on just like uh, patterns that we pulled out of some book, right? We work on validations and invalidations, not hopium. And so if you go ahead and take a look at our current price action, we're doing something very nice, right? Which is that we put in a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a higher low here. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to invalidate, I mean, we don't want to violate that uh, higher low. What we want to do is maintain this, uh, let's call it 45,500. It's basically just our current low, right? It's our current low on the 12 hour here. And then uh, we also have like a major, a major low for this entire movement here at uh, 43,000. Mm, uh, pardon me, 44,250, you could call it, right? So this is the range that you have to play with in order for this to be maintained as a possible low. And then we continue on our way and make some high, you know, maybe in the 50s, okay? But keep in mind, if we violate this low, we're going to end up making this into a high, right? Like this will be a high. And then what's that going to be? It's going to be a lower high. All right? High, lower high, even lower high. And you're going to see that we're just going to be in a downtrend. And what that would suggest is that perhaps that 20% fall could play out and that this was just a temporary like ledge because of course charts don't move in straight lines right you have you you've seen charts they always have like these little patterns on them right and so what if this entire movement that we've just been in has just been one of these kind of zigzags you know on a on a cartoon chart right on a cartoon chart where they just have like some zigzag on a chart, right? You want to be aware that there is some truth in that, right? There is the possibility that this is a downtrend. And unless we validate this area as a low, right? This area as a low, unless we validate it as a low, and 
unless we can keep it as support, you know, on our way up, then it becomes a lower high. Okay, I'm not going to spend uh, any more uh, time on that. I just want to make sure that um, you understand the warnings and that I'm putting them out there because now comes the hopium, right? Now comes the hope and what this episode is about, which is that, um, of course, uh, we took a look at Kareto the other day and Kareto is still hanging on. It's still doing its thing. What did I say? As long as it holds... 190, I'm not worried about it. It didn't violate 190. Yeah, it wicked to two. I mean, sorry, uh, as long as it held uh, 290. Yeah, it wicked to 288, 289. Whoop de doo. It's holding this area. The squeeze is continuing. I mentioned, you know, keep this buy box. You could sell here. You could sell here. I told you, we, you could sell in that area if you wanted to. And that I was going to continue to keep uh, those. Um, you know, uh, that sell box up here, because I just expected that maybe we would have a pullback on Bitcoin, and we did, all right? And so, of course, if uh, that we have a greater pullback, then maybe we're going to see these lower levels, and we're going to have an opportunity to buy down here. But um, otherwise, you know, we're holding around 290, and, you know, this thing is still set up as long as Bitcoin uh, stays bullish to start squeezing to the upside. And so that's Credo. But the thing that I wanted to show you about Credo is its uh, EMA structure on the weekly. And then the blue line here is just its, uh, just its price action. So you can see it's getting in between these uh, two lines here, this, uh, this uh, 21 on the weekly and this, you know, this uh, 9 on the weekly. And I think you can see it better on the 5-day. Yep, on the 5-day. This one is curling up, you know, it's holding and it's curling up, and this one is threatening to curl up. When the 21 starts to curl up, then this thing is going to go, okay? So I'm setting, I'm saying Credo has a setup. And the reason why I wanted to show uh, you Credo again is because that's the same thing that we have going on in Kadena. Only uh, Kadena's is a little bit more advanced. You can see Kadena put in a pump. It was pretty much in the same situation that Coretto is. And yeah, it could have a pullback and get back into the situation that Coretto is. But if you look at these two charts, they are uh, they are basically sisters, okay? They're basically twin sisters. Their EMA structures look very similar. Not much different going on here. Okay, not much different at all. You, know, you tell me the difference, right? <laughs> okay. And so what we have here is the potential for a Kadena squeeze also to the upside. This uh, 21 is starting, you know, starting to get an upward slope. It's flat right now, but if you really look at it, it has a slight upward slope. And so look, we're seeing, uh, you know, Kadena just slightly pump right before our eyes. One of the things that kind of holds these coins back is if, if you see the uh, MA of the uh, 21, it is pointed down still. And we're on the five day. But you can see that it's still pointed down. So it's not, it hasn't flattened out. The, this is just the, st the simple moving average. And then this thick one is the uh, EMA, right? And uh, which I think is, is exponential moving average, but I always forget what the E stands for. And so if you can get into this area and then you start pumping and you fight through the resistance and then this one and then you get uh, supported by this one and you're on top of it then you know you can really go. But it it both of these coins have some work to do. I just want you to know that you are positioned to get in at a great price and as long as uh Credo doesn't dump below again 290 as long as it holds that level and sits on top of it. That's important. It sits on top of it. It can't just be at 290 or under. It has to be bouncing around on top of it in the, in the low uh, $3 range, just like what it's doing right now. That's perfectly fine. If it just keeps bouncing in that range, you know, then, you know, eventually these things are going to, you know, flatten and start pointing up more and more because these ones are going to con continue to come up and this one's just going to flatten out and eventually it's going to get squeezed up. 
And same thing with Kadena. Kadena's already doing it. It's already starting to pull the uh, 21 up. Let's go ahead and put our price action on there. You can see what I'm talking about, right? So the price is getting pulled up. And then let's go ahead and take a look at some of our, um, you know, the just the midline that we might be talking about. Oops, got this in. Yep, here's the midline. And so really what we're talking about is Kadena having to hold, you know, I would say at this point uh, $7.20 because of how this 9 has been curling up. As long as we hold $7.20, then I'm not worried about Kadena. I do want to see it to hold on to, you know, $7.20, uh, somewhere in this range. Right, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be in the middle. It, you know, it should be in the middle of this uh, this uh, yellow line and the and the uh, red line here, which is the uh, 21 and the uh, 9 EMA. And so, you know, seven forty seven dollars and forty cents would be ideal. But you know, if it just bounces up and down, such that it's getting supported on the nine. Then seven dollars twenty cents, even a wick to seven dollars and fifteen cents or seven dollars and ten cents. It doesn't matter if it's just a wick, but we want to see it slowly bouncing up, getting into that squeeze and getting pushed up. And then we're going to see some possibilities for some major gains. Of course, it has a bunch of resistance zones that it has to go through. It, it, it's almost like this uh, twenty EMA, uh, this twenty MA, the simple MA. Uh, represents this type of resistance that we have in this area. And so it's just going to chug along, and then eventually you're going to uh, get a nice pop. And you're already starting to get it if you bought down here. But the risk about buying down here is that you were under your 21 and you were under your 9, so you could have gotten squeezed to the downside. All right? If, Bit if anything had happened to Bitcoin, you could have gotten squeezed to the downside. So of course you can take that risk to buy that range, and this was the range that I had showed you several times. Showed you this range several times. Where if you had been buying in at this in this purple box, you were relatively safe. And then, you know, if you ever had a chance to buy into these green boxes, you know, you should take that opportunity because it just would represent a great opportunity for Kadena. No guarantee that we would get there. You know, if you ever had the chance, you know, right here you had the chance, right here you did. You know, you wicked down to it here twice. Just great buying opportunities, but that this purple box is probably where you want to load up. And then as this thing, uh, as this thing's EMAs were, you know, starting to form, because look, it takes time for them to form. They're all pointed down here. They're all pointed down. So as it takes time to round, you know, to, to, to round out and form, then you're going to want to be selling in this purple box because why don't you make money? All right? Let's see from here to here, 78%, right? You can make money, right? From here to here, right? 60%. You can make money. You don't have to hold these things. You don't know if the market is just going to, you know, you know, turn around and just dump. And so you should make your money when you can. So that's why this purple box was, you know, you could hold out for these upper levels, right? Which is the big profit points. But just personally, just I recommend for my own style of trading that you take profit when you can, especially while these things are all pointed down because you never know if the market will just squeeze it all the way down. And then you don't want to be uh, holding a bag of coins, right? You want to be holding money so that you can pay bills, right? So you can buy, uh, you know, coins cheaper. You don't want to be holding coins. You don't want to be holding expensive coins. You want to be holding cash that you can use to buy cheap coins later on, right? And so you take your profit, you take your profit, you take your profit, you take your profit, you take your profit. Oh, we're starting to get an upward curvature. Okay, now is the time that I just buy in and hold. And if we do get positive uh, slopes on these things, and if Bitcoin looks lively, it's not dying, like I was pointing out the possibility for it to die, right? But um, if it's if Bitcoin breaks through its resistance, if it puts in that higher high, if it keeps going into the 50s, all that stuff, then of course, you know, as this thing pushes through, as Kadena pushes through this purple area, 
you can go ahead and you know buy in on those areas right you can buy in as as a confirmation of a breakout where you know basically Kadena went like this and then maybe it hit some resistance it came back you know into this area and now it's going right so if it's going to do that then what you would want to do is uh, you know this uh, purple you know becomes your last buy zone that's why it's purple right it's not green or red like this is just playing this range and if you get squeezed out of this range now that the EMAs are squeezing which by the way it didn't apply here that principle didn't apply over here it only applies over here this was the transition area okay and it has to do with EMAs if you're not watching your EMAs then you don't know what the heck I'm talking about all right you wouldn't know how to time that you would have just been buying and holding thinking you're going to squeeze right away you know to the upside but you're not right you're not going to the moon you're going to you got sent right back down why because your EMAs were all pointed down this stuff's important right it's important that you understand it in order to trade properly and so basically this is just the sister chart to uh Curetto. Uh, there, there are several charts that look similar to this, and you know, but I wanted to just track two that were very similar, so that we could kind of follow up what's going on. And just like Curado, I can show you, you know, using these uh, weekly EMAs, you know, what's going on. Just go ahead and put in a curve here. Kind of connect all these wicks together. It doesn't have to be perfect showing you like how the price action is moving and how we're getting a squeeze here let me go ahead and turn this uh, orange nice bright orange maybe make our price action into just that blue line and now it starts to become very clear right it starts to become very clear that what's going on is that we're getting this kind of squeeze like this is a lemon wedge right and you're squeezing it and the juice can flow out down here but uh, up here you know it's gonna it's gonna squirt to the upside right like you're gonna get some uh, mist in your eye you know from that lemon juice right so of course like a, you want to be positioned where these things are going to be pulling up pulling up and then you know, about to just uh, squeeze to the upside, if this is a lemon squeeze, right? And, uh, you know, what you could expect is perhaps, you know, just playing around this area a little bit, who knows, whatever. And then you're gonna get some resistances and then hopefully it goes on its way, right? And so what are those resistances? Let me go ahead and turn off these boxes. Just get some clarity here. These resistance resistances are in, you know, basically heavily, heavily right here overhead. It's kind of what's limiting us, you know, from just squeezing right away. It's gonna bounce around a bit. Maybe there's a huge pullback. Maybe not. Right. You might get a last chance to buy in. In which case you have this purple box, right? And then we go for it. That's all assuming that Bitcoin behaves nicely. If Bitcoin dumps, the rest of the market is going to dump. Okay? That's just how it is. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't make the rules. Unfortunately, you know, the way all the bots and algorithms and the way that the institutions trade... It's all based upon the health of Bitcoin, okay? So that's that's who they've chosen to be the leader. It's the oldest coin. It has the most stability to it. It has the most security to it. And, you know, if Bitcoin dumps, then don't be surprised if Kadena dumps, okay? Don't blame that on me. Do your own risk management. But we are starting to get into that squeeze. Our EMAs are telling us that we do have a big squeeze coming up. But just keep in mind, just like Credo, the 21 is still flat. We still have work to do. I'm just saying that 
Whereas previously I was telling you to trade Kadena and Kareto, now I'm telling you we're at the apex of these wedges. And if you wanted to do your own risk management and you know assume some HODL positions, then for both Kareto and also for Kadena, these would be the spots to start considering it. And then having your stop loss, right? Because previously this purple area was your buy zone. And previously this purple area was your sell zone. But once we get into that squeeze play, what happens is that that purple area on the bottom now becomes your stop loss. Right? Previously it was that's why it's purple. Right? That's why I made it purple. I put thought into this. So previously it was a buy zone for you. But now that we're entering the squeeze, it's your stop loss. If we break under these prices, right? You probably want to sell because we're probably getting squeezed to the downside. Right? We got rejected from the wedge. Bitcoin took shit, you know, and so we're getting flushed with it. Okay. However, if Bitcoin stays healthy, then this has now become your buy zone right up here. Whereas previously, previously it was your take profit zone. You see how that squeeze flips things? Trade this range. Once you get into a squeeze, you know, assume the position, <laughs> right? Assume the huddle position and, you know, pray to, uh, you know, what Crown calls Bula Jesus, okay? So, uh, you know, guys, I hope that was helpful in how you think about trading uh, Kadena, Kareto, and also I hope that I imprinted heavily enough on you the warnings uh, for the market. I do think that we're going to the upside. I wouldn't be presenting this information if I didn't think that this market was going to squeeze a little bit more out. I am on the bullish side. However, staying neutral, not being a moon boy, and not being a doom boy, we are looking at both situations. Okay, that was your alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.